Good morning, MCBC. Thanks for joining us today, even though it's a little bit rainy, but I guess uh, you guys are still at home. So um, let's just uh, prepare our hearts to uh, worship our God together. God, we thank you um, for this day. Um, even though it's a little bit gloomy or rainy outside, Lord, we thank you for the cooler weather. Um, and we just thank you that even though we um, are not phys physically together, we are still able to praise and worship your name. Um, as one. And so, Lord, we lift up this service to you. Um, may you be glorified. May you be praised in your name. Amen. You bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we So we pour out our praise to you only. You give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. All the earth. Even 
are more. You are more, you are more than my words will ever say. You are Lord, you are Lord, all creation will proclaim. You are here, you are here, in your presence I may hold. You are God, you are God, of all else I'm letting go. And now I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the riches of your life. My heart will sing no other name, Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing no other name, Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing no other name. One of our favorite things about small groups is uh, the genuine friendships that you make um, with people. It's a place where you can grow and also have fun. Um, and if someone is wondering if they should get involved in a small group. I would say absolutely. It's a great way to make friends and also get connected or involved in church. Um, and something that surprised you about being part of a small group? Was the willingness of everyone to share their joys and hardships and openly pray for one another. All right, good morning, church. Uh, thanks for joining us on our live stream today. If you take a look right now, you'll notice that I'm actually pre-recording this message from home. And the reason is just a precautionary thing. I uh, just wanted to get a COVID test done and uh, still waiting for the results. So as a safety measure, just to make sure I'm not uh, affecting anyone who's on our live stream crew, I'm gonna do this from home today. And, and so I hope that you'll just bear with me as I do that. Uh, so again, church, thanks for being a part of our online service. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for uh, spending time with us this Sunday. Um, today, what we're doing is we're in the middle of a series. We're talking about our church and um, just the vision that we would have. And so really, we're talking about God's vision for us as a church and what our future is. And last week, as we looked at this, we were just talking about what it means for us to be in this season of waiting and we're still waiting uh, we're still waiting to reopen physically the building of the church and gathering together we're grateful we had one outdoor service already and in fact let me tell you we're going to do that again at the end of september on the last weekend of september the september 27th sunday so we're going to give you some information on that after the message here uh, but uh, we're looking at this series of vision we always take this time in september to say okay are we on track how are we doing are we doing what god is asking us to do so it's always a good time for us to reevaluate everything that we're doing. Uh, and so what is God's will for me in, in church, in ministry during this season of COVID? 
Uh, last Sunday, as we were looking at it, I remember sharing with you um, the idea of waiting. And one of the, the key things about waiting is that while we wait, we still serve. While we wait, we still serve. After all, when you go to a restaurant, the person who serves you is called a waiter or a waitress. And in fact, the word wait is part of their title. Um, we're waiting. We're waiting on God. We're waiting on God in this season. Maybe we're waiting for work to reopen. We're waiting for our schools to fully reopen. I know that that's happening in this coming week. Uh, we're waiting for um, the church building to reopen. We're waiting for life to have some semblance of a new normal. Um, but what do we do in the midst of all this waiting? And there are some great opportunities for ministry if we would just be attentive to God's Spirit and if we would also be willing to uh, employ the gifts that God has given us. And so one of the things that uh, we like to say here at our church, I know it's taken from another church, but we like to talk about the idea is that at our church, we want everyone to be a spiritual contributor, someone who contributes to the church. Uh, we want to avoid people who are spiritual consumers, people who just come and take. Uh, we're all called to give in some way. We're all called to contribute to this great thing called the church. And for us, the local expression here called the MCBC. After all, at our church, we are a multicultural church. We're an intergenerational church. We're an outward thinking church. But we're also called to contribute to this vision that God has given us. And so here we are today. We just want to explore a bit more about what it means for us to contribute in ways that God has asked us to. But especially during the season where we're waiting, uh, how can we still serve? So can God still use me? What is God doing uh, in my life? How can I be of value and contribute to what God is doing? So you know what happened this uh, this past week is I was in my basement and I was my my workout gym right now is in my basement and I was doing some exercise and I looked up and on top of my closet there um, there's this box and I completely forgot about this box. It's a box from Amazon and in fact I haven't even opened this box and this box actually came back in February, back before this whole COVID thing actually started. But the reason I never opened the box was I now I remember what it was was that it was actually a roof rack for my car because we were getting ready to go snowboarding and every time I throw the snowboards in the back of my my uh, SUV, it tends to leave water and stuff. So I decided, you know, I want to put it on the roof of my car. So I bought a roof rack from Amazon to throw our snowboards up on top. And I never opened it. And, and it's been sitting in my closet this entire time because when COVID hit, we couldn't go to our snowboarding trip for the March break. And then uh, it's, then after that, it was summertime and, and there was no snowboarding, obviously, in summer. And, and so I'm, I'm not even sure if this thing fit. I never even tested it for my car. And I sometimes think that that's why I'm, the reason I'm bringing that up is that maybe that's a bit about uh, an illustration for our own spiritual gifts. Sometimes we have God gives us something. It's a great gift and we've put it away. And in this season of COVID, we've put a lot of things away. And yet at the same time, we haven't unpacked them. We haven't opened up these spiritual gifts and to see maybe God can still use it in some way, shape or form. After all, for me, a roof rack can still be used. I can still use it for camping equipment. I can use it for all kinds of different things. To transport lumber when I was doing some woodworking projects from home, I could have used that uh, to throw the lumber on top of the car. Uh, and so there were opportunities for me to use this, uh, this box, this package, and yet I didn't ever open it. And that's what it's like for us maybe during this season of COVID. God has gifted each and every one of us, and yet at the same time, we're just not ready or willing to open the package yet. So I want to explore with us uh, some spiritual gift ideas. Now, last year, if you were part of our church, we had a whole spiritual gift uh, series and we looked at spiritual gifts for our small groups. I just want to reiterate uh, these spiritual gift ideas for us and just help us think through some of them, especially given the light of our current circumstances that we find ourselves in. So if you have a Bible, I want to just uh, open you up to Romans chapter 12, verses 6 to 8. Romans 12, verses 6 to 8. If you have a Bible, open it up, turn it on, or just follow us on the screen. Here's what it says. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Uh, this is the reading of God's word. Thanks be to God. Um, for this series and for this sermon, we're not going to go through the details of these spiritual gifts, but I want a high level discussion on what spiritual gifts are and what they mean for us. So one of the first things is really, what is a spiritual gift? And a spiritual gift at, at its very core is this spirit given ability that enables Christians to serve 
the body of Christ, a spirit-given ability that enables Christians to serve the body of Christ. Uh, one of the ways you can tell if you have a spiritual gift is that when you're doing something for God, um, does it come with ease? Does it come with effectiveness? And does it come with excitement? Ease, effectiveness, and excitement are, are three ways that you can measure whether or not you actually have a spiritual gift. And I think that's just a, a, a basic general understanding. So the first thing is that it's spirit given. I just want to just highlight what this means. It's spirit given. It's given by God. It, it's not something that we have for ourselves personally. It's been given to us by God because it's from God and it's about God. It's from God and it's about God. And the reality is if these gifts that we have, they're supposed to bring glory and honor to God. It's supposed to point people to Jesus. So if our gifts point people to ourselves, it's probably not a spiritual gift. If our gifts point people to someone else, Probably not a spiritual gift, but if our gifts point people to God, we can consider that maybe as a, a starting point for how we can see these spiritual gifts. After all, it's from God, it's for God, and it's about God. And one of the great things I love about our church is that we're always saying, let's just point people to Jesus. We're just always pointing people to Jesus. So whatever I'm doing, uh, whatever we're doing as a church community, we're just trying to always direct people uh, to Jesus. Think about the Holy Spirit. You know, one of the th reasons why the Holy Spirit is so misunderstood as part of the Trinity is because the Holy Spirit never gives glory to himself. He always redirects glory to God the Father and to Jesus the Son. And again, if it's a spiritual gift given by the Spirit, his MO is to give glory to God and point people to Jesus. Well, I think if it's a spiritual gift, that same modus operandi would happen as well. The second thing is that it's an ability. Um, the idea with an ability is that it's not something that you're naturally talented at or, or, or a skill that you have. Um, it's, it's really an ability that God is giving you. So um, not every talent and skill that we have translates into a spiritual gift. So just because you are naturally gifted with perfect pitch that you can pick up an instrument and play it doesn't make you a good worship leader. Just because your career track is you're a good teacher and teachers we bless you as you're continuing to figure out how to do school in this COVID time, just because you're a good teacher at school doesn't make you a good spiritual teacher or have the spiritual gift of teaching. So we want to look at how our abilities sometimes are different from our talents and our actual skills. When you look at scripture, there are so many different ways you can find spiritual gifts. You have uh, many passages. I'm going to throw up some of these passages for you to uh, mark down and you can look at them at your own time and in your own pace. Uh, but Romans 12 that we're looking at today has a discussion on what spiritual gifts look like, what some of these abilities are. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12 verses 4 and onwards talks about, an, about another list of abilities. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 28 talks about another group of abilities. You also have in Ephesians 4.11. You can look at some of the abilities there and you can look at 1 Peter 4.10 and that also talks about spiritual gifts. So there's a lot of different passages that talk about spiritual gifts. Um, but again, there's no real exhaustive list out there for us to consider when it comes to spiritual gifts. Really, there is just, uh, just think about it. The things that I have in my life, the things, the abilities that I have in my life, do they come with ease and are they effective and am I excited about them? And really, do they direct people to God? Um, those can be considered a lot of times the abilities that are considered spiritual gifts. And so another thing for us to consider then is who has spiritual gifts? And really at the core of it, anyone who is a follower of Jesus Christ, you have been given a spiritual gift. You have been blessed and anointed with a gift from God. And so everyone who follows Jesus. So I want to just tell you that and just say, again, it's not because you are a special um, Christian. No, it's, it's simply a grace given by God. It's not because you know more of the Bible that you will get a, a spiritual gift. No, it's because you simply follow Jesus. So honestly, your pastors have spiritual gifts, um, but we're not better and we're not greater than your spiritual gifts. Our church leaders have spiritual gifts, but it's not greater or better than your spiritual gifts. Everyone who follows Jesus, you have a gift. So it's not better, not worse. It's just you're gifted. And the, the reality is with these gifts, they're so different and they're so varied, but there's a reason for that because when you put everything together, you have something that I don't and I have something that this person doesn't. But when we put it together, this is how God wants his community to work together um, to accomplish his purposes. And so that leads us to another question then. Where do I use my gifts? And the reality is these gifts are to be used 
everywhere. They're to be used everywhere. You're supposed to use them in the church. You're supposed to use them as you represent the church. You're supposed to use them outside the church because at the end of the day, you are the church. You and I, we are the church. And it needs to be uh, used. It needs to be in places where it's exercised. It needs to be in places where they're grown and developed. We need to use these gifts. Uh, and so again, it's really not about uh, coming to church and just sitting uh, in a pew and listening and just consuming content online. It's not about just take, take, take. Spiritual gifts call us to contribute. And I know this is a weird season that we're in. And I'm just going to mention that we're, we are in a very strange season and that's reality. But there are still ways in which we're called to exercise these gifts. There are still ways in which we're called to contribute to what God is doing uh, beyond the four walls of a building. Even though the building is closed, you and I represent the church. You and I can still point people to Jesus with the gifts that he's given to us. And so don't stop using those gifts. Don't stop using those gifts. They're to be used everywhere we go. So whether we're doing it on a Zoom call with our colleagues, whether we're doing it on a Google Meets with our small group, whether it's just because we're sitting at the dining table with our families, these spiritual gifts can be used everywhere. Whether we're on our walk uh, with our spouse and we run into the neighbors, or whether we're driving around still, uh, whatever it is, we can still use these gifts. And so that leads us to another question then. Well, how do I discover my gifts? How am I going to discover my gifts? And well, I'll be upfront and tell you, I'm not the biggest fan of spiritual, spiritual gift inventories. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but you can use them. Um, there are some good ones out there, but I find that they're always a little bit biased. We can always kind of aspire to have certain gifts and answer these questions uh, with a certain bias. Um, but one of the ways in which we can find out what is your spiritual gift is what are you passionate about for Jesus? What are you passionate about for Jesus? Um, some of you are really passionate about sharing Jesus with others. Some of you are really passionate about just serving Jesus behind the scenes uh, and not receiving any kind of recognition and credit. Some of you guys just love talking with people and some of you just love um, writing. What are you passionate about when you're serving Jesus? And that's one of the ways in which you can start to discern these gifts. But another way is what are you complaining about the most when it comes to church? I know that's a weird one. But that is actually something. Uh, what do you complain about the most when it comes to church? Because sometimes you're complaining so much about it because you think and you know there is a better way to do it and you're just not doing it yet. And so I want to invite you, if you're considering uh, how to use your gifts and how to discover your gifts, if you're complaining about something quite a lot at church, maybe you're supposed to think through how I can serve in that area. So, for example, I, you know, there have been a few of you, and this is not a criticism by any means, but you, you said, oh, you know, the live stream, it could be like better, it could be this, it could be this. I mean, great, come, join, help us, teach us, show us. We're, we're open to it. We're not, we don't control everything that's going on here. We're trying to figure it out as we go. And maybe you're gifted to know technology better, and you're gifted with the ability to see beyond what we're doing, and God has given you a vision. So, great, come and do that. We'd love that. And maybe um, that's one thing. If we're complaining a lot about something in particular, uh, maybe that's a way in which we're supposed to explore a gift there. Another way is really through trial and error. Uh, trial and error will always um, be an interesting challenge, but again, it's, it's an opportunity. And we're a church that says it's okay to make mistakes. We're, we're, we're okay to make mistakes. We're okay to make mistakes for the first time. We're just trying to learn not to repeat mistakes all the time. So trial and error, you're gonna find it through trial and error. I tell you, this live stream thing that we're doing, uh, there is no way that Enoch Lau, our pastor, our youth pastor, was gifted uh, in this. He learned it through trial and error, and, and God blessed him with the ability to, to figure this out. Um, whereas others, like Simba, was gifted, and he understood how to do this. I don't know how to do tech stuff. I'm not the most tech-savvy person, as, as maybe that's a misconception that's out there. But over this COVID time, God has granted me the ability to try to learn how to use some of this tech and to do things in different ways and to create videos and to create all these different ways in which we can create content to share God with others. So this is one of the ways in which we can also discover is through trial and error. But let me just caveat it with this. Uh, just because you're not good at something doesn't mean you can use that as an excuse not to do it. Just because you're not good at something isn't a means to say you don't have to do it. For example, some people say, well, I'm not just good at evangelism, therefore I don't need to share the gospel. No, that's not how a spiritual gift works. And in fact, God has always said, if you trust me, 
I will give you the abilities to do these things. If you'll take a step of faith with me, I will do it. Because sharing the gospel it can be intimidating with, for people, and at the same time, it can be so natural for others. But we're all called to do it. We're all called to do it. We're, we can't use it as, a, as an excuse to say, well, just because I'm not gifted in that, therefore I don't have to do it. Well, I'm not gifted with uh, caring for people, therefore I don't have to care. That, that just doesn't make sense. It's not a Christian principle to not care for people, to not have compassion for people, to not have empathy for people. So just because I don't have a gift doesn't mean I cannot be used by God. Um, after all, I want to just illustrate it this way. There's the story of Balaam, the prophet, and his donkey. And God spoke through the donkey. And I always say, if God can speak through a donkey, God can speak through me. And we all know what the King James Version of a donkey is. It's our English vernacular. You know the word. And if God can use a donkey, God can use me. So just think through that. But at the same time, never, um, ha never think about uh, the fact that if I'm not gifted, I can't do something. But uh, one of the other ways in which we can always look at our giftings is, does it come with ease when I do certain ministries? Does it come with effectiveness when I do certain ministries? And am I excited to do it? Those, those three things can really help you understand uh, whether or not you're gifted in something. Because you know what? Um, Sometimes we worry about burnout, and I'm going to say to you, if you're really using your gifts, you don't burn out. You don't burn out. You just, you just love doing what it is that God has gifted you to do. And you'll find creative ways to keep doing what God has gifted you to do. It's because these things come with ease, and you see the effectiveness it has, and you're just so excited to keep doing it. Uh, so that's another thing to consider. So these are how we can discover our spiritual gifts. And the last thing to just consider is, is how, how do I use my gifts? And there's an attitude here that I want to just address. And, and there's just two simple attitudes that we always have to keep in our minds as we use our spiritual gifts. The first is this, to be humble, to be humble. Pride, I think, is always the worst thing, uh, one of the worst sins out there. It's one of the most devastating sins out there. It's one of the, the, the most difficult sins for us to see. But when we have humility with whatever we're doing, that way, when, when, when God uses us, we can always point people back to God. When God gets the glory, it's not our glory, it's God's glory. So just, just keep that in mind. Always have a humble attitude as we use our spiritual gifts. And the second thing then is, as we use our spiritual gifts, do it with great joy. Do it with great joy. Uh, there is always joy in just being used by God, being able to serve God, and being able to just honor God this way. But again, here we are in this season. That, that's just an overview of spiritual gifts, but we're in this season of COVID. And, and church, this is the time where we need each other the most. We need each other the most. It's not the time to start hibernating. It's not the time to start pulling away. It's not the time to start, uh, you know, abandoning church. This is the season in which we need each other the most. And you know what? God is actually speaking to you and to me in new and fresh ways. And the problem is sometimes our antenna, we're just not listening. And we need to tune in a little bit better during this COVID season. God is speaking to us in new and fresh ways. This whole COVID thing, it's not an obstacle. It's a great opportunity to see how God can do new and refreshing things. And so God is inviting us into a season of serving, but it's gonna be so unique. It's gonna be so different from what we're used to. And we just need to be on board with the fact that God is still at work and God is calling us to still serve. So please, church, I'm gonna implore you, don't stop serving in this time. Don't stop serving in this time. You know how you can still serve? Serve in your groups. If you're not in a group, get in a group. This September right now, we're in the middle of a small group relaunch. So get in a group. It's not time to pull away and stop meeting with people online. It's time to get in there and start uh, putting yourself out there for other people. And, and so don't do, do it in your groups. Find ways to bless your colleagues. Find ways to bless your neighbors. Find ways to bless one another. I, I keep saying it this way. Don't stop churching. This is not the time for us as a church to pull back. It's a time for us to dig in and find new ways in which we can be the church. Don't stop churching. Don't stop Christianing. So all this uh, COVID does is allows us to reevaluate to reevaluate ways in which we were doing things that maybe we don't need to do them that way anymore. You know what? Meetings, there's new ways to do meetings. We don't have to drive all the way back uh, to church to sit in a meeting for 
three hours. No, we can do it now remotely from our homes for about an hour and get it done. And it's, it's caused us to maybe rethink how we do meetings, right? It's caused us to rethink how we can care for each other. It's caused us to rethink how we can um, just be in fellowship with each other. It caused us to rethink what are the priorities of what it means for us to be the church. And that's the challenge. What are my priorities? It's time to reevaluate church. It's time for us to reevaluate. For some of us, the question is, what are my priorities? Can I recommit in this season now? Can I recommit to waking up and joining the live stream? Can I recommit to that? Because for some of us, Sunday now I can sleep in and I can watch the post service uh, later on in the afternoon. No, it's time to recommit to saying, yeah, I can be there at the same time with other brothers and sisters. It's time to recommit um, in our spiritual lives and say, hey, the spiritual life of my children is not the responsibility of Pastor Enoch or Pastor Jenya. It's actually the responsibility of me as a Christian parent. And, and this is a, a recommitment for us to, to contribute to the life of our children's spirituality. Yes, Pastor Enoch and Pastor Jenya, they've been working hard behind the scenes and we love them for it. And hey, give them, give them a comment, give them a like as you hear, hear me say that, but they're only a support. You as parents, we are the ones responsible for the spiritual development for our kids. Can I remember to care for people in my church? Can I remember to care for people in my small group? You know what, it's not just the job of Pastor Jordan. Pastor Jordan's been doing his work, trying to reach out to people, call people, visit people. But again, there's so many of us out there in our church, it's not, it can't fall just solely on him. It's the job of all of us to contribute together. This is, we can't back up on being church. We have to drive forward now. Church, there are new opportunities to serve God. There are new ways to serve God. Um, let's not give up doing that. Let's not back away from that. Can we just retune our ears and to hear new ways in which God is calling us to serve? serving in new ways like online, serving in ways that we never thought possible. Some of you have great ideas, but we haven't been able to hear you. So what we're gonna do is as you're hearing me now, we're gonna put it in our comment section, just a simple form to say, hey, I'm willing to just contribute. I don't know how, I don't know what, I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to listen for God. So you know what that means? Join us in praying, join us in praying as often as you can. We have set up so many different prayer meetings as an opportunity for us to pray corporately. Join us in praying to hear God. Trial and error. Say, I'm willing to just try something. You know what? I told you again, Pastor Enoch didn't know how to do live stream. He had trial and error. We had so much trial and error, didn't we, brother? Like we had so much trial and error, right? And, and so I'm willing to just do trial and error and figure out new and fresh ways that God can serve. Uh, and so if you would take that form just fill it out for us. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to see how God will call you to contribute, to be a spiritual contributor in his church here at the MCBC. So thanks for listening in. I hope that message is a challenge and at the same time, an encouragement. Don't stop churching. Don't stop Christianing. Be a spiritual contributor here at our church. We're gonna turn it over to our worship leader to lead us in a song uh, to continue to reiterate that point. Um, thank you, Pastor Ken, for that message um, and the good reminder that, you know, just because we're not together doesn't mean um, that we stop serving, right? That we stop being the church, um, that we stop churching um, just because we're not physically in the church. Um, and so let's continue to reflect on that this week as we um, pray about, you know, what are our spiritual gifts as we discover them and how we can use them like outside um, these four walls, I guess some of us are here, but um, most of us are at home, most of us are still working or working from home or seeing family or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, I want to encourage you to um, find ways to just find your spiritual gifts and how you can use them, not just, you know, at church because, you know, obviously we can't be physically together right now, but um, yeah, it was, as we sing this next song, it's called Life Song. Um, it's a pretty old song, but um, it might be new to some of you. Um, if you're comfortable, feel free to join in. But if not, um, the lyrics will be at the bottom. Just reflect on it, how we can um, have our life song uh, be glorifying to God. Um, 
how we can use our life to serve God, um, to love others, to care for others, even if it's not, you know, technically our strong points. Um, God still calls us to love his people and to serve him um, whatever we're doing, wherever we are, whether we're in the church or we're outside hanging with friends or family, or we're at home just being with our own family. Um, yeah. Such small sacrifice If not joined with my life Sing in vain tonight So may the words I say And the things I do Make my life so simple Bring a smile
So again, I just want to say thank you for being a part of our live stream. Uh, even though I've had to pre-record this, just thank you for joining us. I do have a couple things I want to share with you that are exciting and we hope that you would want to be a part of it. The first thing is this, uh, we're doing a 12-week discipleship uh, course um, that uh, one of our leaders is going to be leading uh, during this time. So um, the information is going to go in the chat right now. Uh, you can fill out that form and be a part of this 12-week discovery in, in Christian discipleship. The second thing is that we want to let you know is that we're continuing to redo small groups at this time. It's a good time for you to join a group if you're not in a group. Uh, if you've been in a group and maybe you stopped meeting because of COVID and you want to start meeting regularly again, um, we're going to just uh, we're going to just have another small group push during this season and this time. So uh, again, there's going to be a link in our comment section uh, for you as well to join small groups. If you're already in a group, great. If you're not, please, please take the opportunity to join our groups. And the third thing is this, we're excited to tell you again, we're going to do an outdoor service. Uh, we did one in August. We're going to do another one here in September 27th. So uh, that link is going to go in also in our in our chat section there, in our comment section. Um, so click that link, sign up. We need you to sign up. Uh, we are restricting attendance to 100 people this time. Um, but pre please bring a mask. Uh, I know it's a little bit cooler maybe outside, but hey, um, it's not snowing yet. So let's still meet, meet each other and see each other from a distance. Uh, so our outdoor service will be on September 27th and that information is there. If you're watching this post service, um, again, all this stuff can, you can find also on our website. Um, so all the information that you need uh, to also find on our website as well. And we're going to be sending emails out to you and our church community. So in the meantime, thank you for joining us. Love and peace. May God continue to bless you. Hey, church, um, we're still the church. Uh, we're still called to do what God is asking us to do. It may be new. It may be different. But hey, it's going to be exciting. I can't wait to see what God is going to do. So love and peace. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you again.